Dr. English here. I'm working at Hillside Veterinary Clinic. Um, I've been in LVT for about two years. I went through Cedar Valley College and I graduated in 2017. So just making some videos to show y'all kind of our day to day here in surgery. So we are in our OR right now in our little surgical unit. So I just kind of want to talk with y'all a little bit and bring y'all into the OR and we'll talk about some of the equipment. So in our OR we do have two surgical tables um, so we can do pump out lots of surgeries. Um, kind of at the same time, we have two doctors and nurses working on uh, two separate patients at the time. So here's our surgical table, and then our uh, this is where this, the surgeon puts all of his instruments and everything whenever we go. So the patient lays here. We have a nice little bear hugger to keep them nice and warm here. And then um, this is kind of our little anesthetic machine here. Um, so we like to get everything set up and prepped before we ever even bring the patient inside. So major things that we need are our tubes, our little bag here, make sure everything's all set up. And then we'll make sure that we have full SIBO in our SIBO machine here. And then we'll always make sure that our oxygen is good to go, make sure that it's connected and that it is on. Um, and then here is our monitoring machine. So we have all of our leads kind of hooked up right here for right now. Um, so of course, once we get the patient in here, we'll get them down, connect everything, and then our monitor. I can turn this on to show y'all. It'll turn on. Um, and then we have our fluids over here and our fluid monitoring. Um, so we'll hook, hook them up on IV fluids throughout the whole entire procedure. And then, yeah, so there's our little monitoring system. Um, so like I said, we like to set up everything before we ever bring our patients in here, make sure we're ready to go, make sure everything, as soon as the patient hits the table, we're hooking up and then the surgeon's coming in. So the um, way I like to prepare for my anesthetic patients, um, we do run blood work on all of our patients before we do anything. So the usually the veterinarian takes, takes a look at blood work, make sure the patient is healthy for everything, make sure that um, anesthesia will be uh, good for that dog. Um, and then the way I personally look at it, I'm, I'm looking at the dog, I'm looking how, let's say, like, so we're about to do a surgery on Harlow. We're seven months old. Nice and healthy, blood work looks good. Um, so I'm just kind of mentally preparing myself for, you know, a healthy puppy surgery. Um, you know, some other surgeries, you can be doing like more emergency surgeries and the patients are older. So I always kind of want to make sure, you know, you're looking for if the dog has a heart murmur or anything like that, kind of mentally preparing yourself to be ready to tackle anything that needs to come on. Okay. All right, so this is Miss Harlow here, um, our little seven-month-old Catahoula mix, and she's getting spayed today. So we're going to talk through our induction process here. So we have our anesthetic machine out here ready to go, um, and we are just doing our prep out here, and then once we're ready, then we'll be moving into our OR. So we have our our check tube and then our propofol. So she has already been pre-medded, and she, we already placed a little IV catheter. So, um, so what we're doing next is going to induce anesthesia and start pumping the propofol in and then we'll get going. Um, so we are going to check our tube first, make sure that the inflation cup works. So Miss Holly is going to be doing that here. And so see how it flips up and then it's not deflating, there's no holes. So looks like that tube is good to go. All right. And so now we're going to be given our propofol. Mm -hmm. So propofol is important. Um, you don't want to give it too fast. And give it nice and slow. As you see Holly's doing here, just pushing nice and slow. I'm going to do about half of the amount. Wait about 30 seconds, see how we're feeling. And then, um, and then you can push more kind of as needed. See, she's getting pretty, pretty sleepy. It's very <laughs> Sweet dreams, baby. She's real pretty. So as we're doing that, I did want to show y'all our anesthetic log here and how we show how we are monitoring and what we're writing down. Um, so as soon as we get going, we're gonna start writing down our times that we're um, that we're monitoring. We like to monitor every, about every five minutes once our patient is under anesthesia. So we write down our sevo percent, the fluids, and then this is going to be our blood pressures, and then our SpO2, heart rate, respiratory rate, and temperature. All right, so the propofol has been administered. So Holly is checking to make sure that the tube is a good size for Harlow. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> really. <laughs> Just see, Cassie will hold up her head here so Holly can see her down her little throat there. And she finds the arithmetic cartilages and places the tube right in there. And then we'll do our tie. And then we'll inflate our cuff. We'll put some lube on her eyes. Y'all got a dirty towel thrown around here somewhere. All right, so now we got her flipped over and we're gonna get her connected. And we're gonna turn on our SIVO and then turn on our oxygen. And then we're just gonna make, check in our heartbeat. Usually on these smaller dogs, you can kind of just feel it, but if you need to, you can use your stethoscope. But I can feel her heartbeat really well here. Nice and stable. All right, so now Holly's going to start prepping the surgical area. So for our space, you want to start shaving the bottom of our little rib cage here, and then all the way down. <laughs> so here at Hillside, um, it's pretty much up to the nurses and everything to, to induce our patients um, and get them on the OR table. Uh, so we play a big role in that and we pretty much do from start to beginning until the surgeon starts making their cuts. All right, so now that we've done our little dirty, or dirty scrub in our prep area, we're going to come into the OR. All right. So now we're going to get her set up, get everything hooked up to her, and get her tube in, make sure our SIBO is on and our oxygen is on. And then we have all of our leads here that are connected. So always important to um, get your monitoring equipment on your patient before anything else. You know, we always want to make sure that everything is running smoothly before we start doing anything else. So I had our pulse ox on and then now I'm doing her little blood pressure cuff. Cassie is getting her fluids hooked up and then Holly is getting her um, little feet tied down to the table. And then we have our EKG leads here that will get placed. So if you notice, it does take a lot of teamwork um, to get surgery going, get all of your patients good to go. Teamwork always helps, especially when there's a lot going on. Our job typically during the surgery is going to be to monitor, make sure our patient is good. So um, every five minutes we are recording on our anesthetic chart, but it doesn't mean you're only monitoring every five minutes. You're always monitoring, always looking at everything, um, and then you never want to completely trust your machine. So, you know, you always want to take a manual heart rate every now and then, make sure everything's working. So it looks like her, her vitals 
are pretty normal, so we'll take a little blood pressure again. Yeah, yeah. So now, um, so now we will do our final scrubs. This is going to be um, Holly scrubbing again, and we're doing our complete final scrub, and then from then we'll be ready for our surgeon to come in. talk with you all a little bit more about um, what were to happen if there's an emergency under anesthesia or anything like that so um, obviously you are monitoring throughout the whole entire procedure always keeping in contact with your DBM um, if any pressures are getting low or if you're worried about any of the pressures always talking with them um, and then just in case an emergency were to happen we do have a crash cart here um, with all of our emergency drugs and anything that we were to need so for purposes I'm just going to put it down here um, so we have everything that we would need, any drugs, needles, catheters, anything that we um, would possibly need in, in, during an emergency. Um, yeah. So again, always, always keep in contact with your DVM, always let them be aware of what's going on, and um, then you'll just kind of go from there. Our DVM is finishing up his stay right now. He is closing his incision. Um, so LBTs can close incisions, can and close um, when it's just the outer skin, but here at Hillside we move pretty quickly, so usually our DVNs finish up.